Uh, well, thank you. Good morning, and thank you for being here. I'm presenting a work, uh, a teamwork, actually. Uh, this is uh, a project that we've been running almost now for two years. We are, I'm working with, uh, we, it's been sponsored by three institutions, the National Institute of Anthropology and History in Mexico City, then uh, the Center for Mobile Life Studies, who has a, a part in Switzerland and part in Mexico, and then the Center for Mathematical Research in Guanajuato, also in Mexico. Um, the, the topic, is, what we are trying to do is actually to develop a recognition system to, uh, for archaeological uh, 3D models. Uh, this is, our motivation is because we realize that there's a lot of production of 3D models, thousands of them are produced every year, and yet we are not actually uh, working much on the analysis of these models and also on the tools to retrieve or classify these resources. So, um, and that's what we, we, we think is important to develop this kind of work. Um, obviously, the traditional way to retrieve and to search for models is to use keyword search. Uh, but obviously, uh, this has one problem, which is that the nomenclature or what the, the naming conventions of artifacts are not standardized. At least in Mexico, that is a big problem. We, we call the same object we can we can call it for many different ways, and also we have the problem with database schemas that are quite different from one project to another. So we thought that developing a recognition system that were blind to to names, uh, we could advance more uh, more quickly in this in this problem. Um, how this will work? Uh, this, uh, you have, for example, a 3D model, a, a mesh, a triangular mesh, and uh, you input this into the system. The system compares, compares the, the shape of this object with thousands of other archaeological models, and then just simply retrieve and rank the results to present to the final user. It's very similar to what Google does for text, right? It's like a search engine. So this is in graphical way, this is what we wa want to achieve, is this. Um, so we have an input model here, and we want to retrieve the similar models in the system and, and discard the, the ones who are not similar. So it's, very, it's quite simple. In this part, it's just retrieval, but we are now also doing classification, which I will explain later. Mm. So. Uh, there are a lot of work doing in the computer vision and machine learning fields, uh, uh, but most of that work is focused on industrial models, or uh, for example, uh, to retrieve uh, parametric based models done without a CAD or in the industry. But in archaeology, we have specific requirements because we are not working with mass produced objects, but with craft, craftsmanship objects, we need to find a system which is robust to, that can recognize objects even if they are not identical, right? So that's a big problem in terms of uh, the mathematical challenge. So we also want that the computer program is able to uh, recognize objects of the same class even if they are not, uh, they don't have this, all the features similar, and also we want to retrieve uh, fragments. Also, uh, uh, we try to match one fragment with, with, uh, uh, with artifacts, complete artifacts that are similar to this one. So in this case, we have a, one example of, uh, of class differences. This is, this is an object the same class, but obviously the headdress of the figure is different in, 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 both, in both objects. So we want the machine to be, sorry, the machine to be able to, to uh, retrieve and classify both, both artifacts. And then we have the other problem, is the problem with the, with the fragments, right? We, we have these four examples, they came from the from masks, and we also need to, to address the problem that archaeologists, uh, in our collections, we have a lot of, of uh, fragments. Uh, so how we do this in terms of mathematics? Well, it's very easy. We, 
we transform we we have to work uh, uh, with with the with the mathematical descriptions of the artifacts so before we uh, these mathematical descriptions are feature vectors basically and uh, what we need of these descriptors shape descriptors is that they are robust to uh, differences in orientation scale and rotation why because when we scan a model we not always have it perfectly in perfect position we can scan a model and one model can be rotated in certain way so one big challenge for the mathematicians developing shape descriptors is that the descriptors are uh, uh, rotation invariant that can be also a scale invariant because i don't care if the model is, is a figure very small or very big what i'm looking for is a system which can recognize objects that are similar in shape even if they are the different sizes um, in the literature, I have two types of shape descriptors. One is global, and the other class is the, the, the local descriptors. For the kind of problems that, that archaeologists address, is we, we are more, the local descriptors are more useful for our, for our work in archaeology, because allow us to, to differentiate these objects that, that are not identical, but uh, have a lot of uh, common features. Uh, this is an example uh, of how this is uh, uh, how we can do this partial matching uh, in both figures, even if the, both figures are in different position, we, we, we are able to recognize them as similar just because there are a lot of patches on both objects that are similar. The color spheres represent, for example, this one, this sphere is very similar, the shape of this neighborhood around this point is very similar to this one. Or, for example, this part, the green dot, is very similar to this one in terms of the curvature of the model or the geometric properties of the model. So if I have a lot of coincidences in these points, I, I am able to, to uh, recognize that both objects belong to the same class. So that's the idea behind the local descriptors for shape. Um, so there are many, many uh, shape descriptors in the computer vision and machine learning literature. Um, it is it's really a matter of trying a lot of them. We've been doing many trials with many different descriptors. Uh, in a later paper, I will present another case, but we, are, we, we, we have been, as I said, we have been working in this for almost two years. Uh, last year in Siena, we presented these descriptors, which are based on distance. Uh, one way to uh, see this, uh, to describe the shape of this artifact is to, for example, is one, one of the descriptors is to, from the centroid of the model, measure the distance from the centroid to the surface of the model. And these measurements, you can have a sample, for example, of 10,000 10, points on the surface of the model and measure these, these 10,000 distances. And then with those distances, just uh, we create a histogram. So, uh, and what we compare among models is the histogram uh, of, of that, of, of all the models. So this is one measure. Another one is the area of each triangle. Another one is uh, uh, the volume of tetrahedros on the model. And what we obtain, as I said, is these histograms. Uh, for example, for this model, we have these five descriptors. Uh, so that's the histograms for these five different measures of distance that I presented before. And this will give you intuitively what is what we are comparing. Each object with, with different shape has a different histogram. So what the machine does is comparing these histograms. And then we work on another descriptor based on harmonic functions. This basically is it's quite complicated to explain it uh, uh, mathematically uh, or, or with words because uh, what basically the, the, the harmonic functions does is to try to measure how many deformations an object must have f uh, to become a perfect sphere. So it's basically what you have a sphere, perfect sphere, and how many uh, deformations we have to do to the sphere to achieve a cer certain shape like this one, right, like, like this figure. 
first, we have to, to pre-process the model and convert it. Instead of working with a, a triangular mesh, we have to voxelize the model, like, uh, like the one you are seeing here. Basically, converting this shape into blocks and, and applying the, the harmonic functions into that, into that voxelization model. And so this is what we have. We have a signature for each different shape, and then the machine compares these signatures, which is uh, what it does. Uh, so now we are working uh, with a new descriptor and also with a new, new approach. We are doing not only retrieval of the models, but we are trying to experiment with classification, with automatic classification. So given a model, we want the computer to assign it to a certain class. So we want the computer to learn the features that constitute a class of artifact. So we can distinguish, for example, between flutes and pots, between pots and, and sculptures. So that is the, the, the phase we are working on. Uh, so for this phase of object recognition, first we need to detect a lot of interesting points on the surface of the models. There are many algorithms also in the computer vision literature to extract the most interesting points under which we are going to extract the shape descriptors, the local descriptors. So we extract a sample of points on the surface of the model and then um, compute a shape descriptor for each one of these points. So this, this is similar to this, what we saw in this. Uh, so basically what we are doing is to to select a sample of points on the surface of the model and extract local descriptors on each one of these, of these points. Oh, and then, uh, we, so we compare the shape descriptors and then we apply a clustering technique. Let's say we have 10,000 descriptors in one model uh, and we have 300 models, we are going to have a, a massive amount of data. So what we do is to try to cluster, which try to identify cluster of similar features that are going to be the more meaningful to recognize a certain class of artifacts. That's the idea of the clustering technique. And once we find this clustering, we define this as like our dictionary of shapes or, or features. And on that, we, we uh, extract the histograms to compare different models. Um, so, uh, one of the, the, the new descriptors that we are using is one called point feature histogram, which basically what it does is, is just takes one point and then measures, uh, uh, extract the normals on that point and compares that normal with, the, with the, uh, the, nor the, measures the angles between the normals in two neighboring points. So it takes a lot of neighbors around the, on the, on the, on the mesh, on the point cloud, takes a point and then extract the normals and measure angles that which actually are reflecting the shape, the curvature of the model. So in terms of mathematical terms, that is what is doing this descriptor. It's, it's trying to, to uh, representing the shape in terms of angular properties. And we, and we, what we do with those measurements is to create a histogram. How many, for example, how many uh, neighbors of one point fit within a certain range of angular, of certain, of certain angles? Uh, and the, um, we actually use a uh, um, um, modified version of the original algorithm. This, this version is called fast point feature transfer histogram because the, 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 the original, this one, uh, it's very, it's very hard to compute, and is is uh, it, it takes a lot of data that are not uh, necessary. So we use a, a not another version. Basically, instead of taking all the points, instead of taking all the neighbor and all the distances between the neighbors, we only select the, the direct direct neighbors of one of the particular point, and look, and then from this also take. Uh, we merge uh, the description of this point, local descriptor of this point, one lo local descriptor of, this, of, of its neighbors, and then we don't have to, to compute so many things. So the computation of the algorithm is much, is much more uh, fast. 
So graphically, what we are doing is this. We are extracting histograms around each point, a histogram, and then comparing, uh, uh, clustering those histograms into this uh, uh, clustering technique. And we try to select how many cluster, how many features we, we think are useful to uh, describe a whole model. So we try with many different number of clusters from 10 to 200. That's one of experiment we, we, we did. And we noticed that actually um, we obtain more clear results when we use a small number of clusters, a small number of features, than when we use a lot of, of, uh, of clusters. Mm -hmm. So for example, aquí, you see in between 10 and 20, we have very good uh, clustering. When we use much more features, uh, the, cl the clustering is not, uh, the recognition is not so good. And here are some of the experiments that we, we perform. Uh, we are working with a collection of 383 objects uh, divided into nine classes. These are the classes, these are the different objects that we, that we are working with. Uh, we have here the number of objects on each class on the right. We see that there are some classes that have a lot of objects, like mass, we have 160, and others like this uh, uh, Chikawas, this one kind of scepter, we have only seven objects. So we, we do that so we can actually uh, uh, evaluate if, if, we, if, if the differences between classes in terms of numbers or objects affects the results. So that's why we are, we are using this data set so variable. So we have here in this first experiment is the interpoint distance, the first descriptor that we use. Uh, you see that uh, in this graph, uh, we have a lot of, of, of classes in this region of the graph, which means that we are actually obtaining almost random results. So it's, this is not a very good descriptor. It's a good descriptor for these classes on top, but for these classes of object, the, the, that descriptor is not really very good. <coughs> We have now the second descriptor, the harmonic functions, which improves, but still not perfect. Uh, we have here another uh, descriptor, uh, the, the, uh, the third descriptor, the new descriptor that we are using, and we, we have also very mixed results. So what we did finally is to try to compile uh, an hybrid descriptor, mixing all, to, all the different ways to describe artifacts together, and we obtain uh, uh, these results which are still much better. Obviously, in this graph, I, uh, some classes are still uh, with low, low performance. There are some classes that are in the range of 68% uh, accuracy, uh, but there are other classes that actually reach 1% or 99% uh, uh, good results. Yeah, and finally, I will show you just some uh, graphic results of the queries that are performed with this hybrid de descriptor. In this case, the query object is this one, and we have this is the results that we obtain. So you can see that the objects are, it's not mixing a mask, for example, in this query, right? So it's working more or less, it's working quite well, actually. Uh -huh. And this is the hybrid descriptor, which is the base descriptor. So in this case, the harmonic functions is also good. Uh, these are, uh, for, for example, in this case, with this query, with this query, we have, with this descriptor, the new descriptor that we are using is not good at all for, for this kind of object. So that's what we decided to, to use the, uh, all the descriptors together in the search. And these are another and other queries. In this case, also the harmonic function descriptor is totally wrong. That's what we cannot rely only on one descriptor. And then we, when we use other descriptors, we obtain so much better results. This is the hybrid. This is also the, the best descriptor for for these um, classes. Okay, thank you very much. Are you...